night, it just didn't work. My wife would go away and leave me to fend for myself. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, could we all, if you can, rise for the reading of Scripture? We're in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. You can be seated. You see your uh, outline, strange, strange title tonight. But uh, I want to talk about a couple of uh, couple people I met since I've been here in Benson. Uh, a year ago or so, there was a gentleman pulled in the RV park that I managed. And he uh, came in to check in, and I happened to be in the office at the time. And he got out of his motor home, and he had on a Harley Davidson hat and a Harley Davidson shirt, big Harley Davidson emblem on it, and a Harley Davidson belt, and he had on motorcycle boots. Now, I started up a private group in our park, and we go out every Wednesday, so I rushed on over to him and said, welcome. Every Wednesday, we go for a motorcycle ride. He says, oh, I don't have a motorcycle. Okay, I'll make it sound that guy, but now I'll bring it on home to me, and some of you will really relate. I came here from Pennsylvania about six years ago. I loved the West. I watched all the cowboy shows on TV when I was a kid and saw all the movies. So after I got here, I went to Spur, and I bought me a black pair of boots and a brown pair of boots. <laughs> big belt, a black one and a brown one with a big buckle on each and the shirts to go with it, and the hat. I wasn't a cowboy. I may have liked cowboys, I may have wanted to imitate them, but then I came to realize they don't have those shiny black boots, they got those work boots on. And they look like they work for a living. So I wasn't a cowboy. I might have looked like one to me, or to my friends back in Pennsylvania. But out here, I wasn't the real thing. I was a phony. Now, going on to where the title of this outline came from, uh, there's a Christian artist named Carmen, who is still around, but was very popular when I first got saved. 
And he had a lot of good novelty kind of songs that were a lot of fun. And it was great for me because at that time I had a whole crew of workers stuck in my 12 passenger van going an hour to a job, an hour home from a job for a whole summer. And I was a brand new excited Christian. And I was their boss. So they couldn't complain too much. And Carmen was the right kind of thing to put on because his songs were fun. Yet they could. But Carmen not only sang fun, song funs, he was a great witness for our Lord. And one of his favorite lines was, Just cause you love to go to McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. <laughs> just like, just because you love to come here and sit in the church doesn't make you a Christian. And there's a whole lot of truth in that. And that's what Matthew 25, 31 through 46 is all about. Now, who were the, who, who was the Lord talking to here? He was telling the people who never accepted him. He was talking to people who truly loved him. And she. And he was talking to people who thought they were very religious because they had helped the poor with great pride, visited the sick while they could boast about it. They would sacrifice as long as they could walk around looking worn down and looking holy, but they didn't do it from their heart. Sitting here every week, Singing songs, of, if the heart isn't right, we're doing it for, you're wasting your time. You're doing it for the wrong reason. Now, this parable has been used a lot by people who want to promote works-based salvation. But that isn't what it's about. Now, the Lord differentiated him between two things. The only thing he said was, you did and you didn't do. So on the surface, that would look like it's worth based. If you did these things, you're my sheep. If you didn't do them, you're the goats. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you here know why he used the sheep and the goats. <laughs> goats, so are very independent. They'll eat anything. Pecan tankers. The sheep need to follow their leader. They need to be led. They need to be cared for. They love their shepherd because the shepherd guards them and provides for them. Now, a lot of people in their lives go through life being a goat. I'm a self-made man. I can do it. I might be in church every week, but I'm a self-made man, and that, the two doesn't mix. You can't be a Christian and promote yourself to be a self-made man. But the truth is, what this scripture is teaching us, plain and simple, is if you do love the Lord and have given your heart to Him, you will do. You can't claim you're Christian and love the Lord and not have it change your life. You don't do it for salvation, but if you receive your salvation, you will do. And he gathered the people of all nations, and said, but, he, he treated them, the individuals. If, if that isn't the case, there's no reason to send, men, send missionaries to non-Christian nations. Could someone uh, read Revelation 20.12 for me? Whoever gets it, just start on up. <coughs> and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged according to their works by the works which were written in the books. That scripture tied in with the scripture tells us that no, there, that's something argued in here where it says he called all the nations. Each and every one of us are responsible for our own relationship with the Lord. Our government doesn't do it for us. Our father doesn't do it for us. Our mother doesn't do it for us. We're each, as adults, responsible for our relation with the Lord. I've been talking way too fast and I'm going through this way too fast. It could be an early night tonight, folks. But what, what speaks most to me in this is the fact that I struggle often. I'm a salty. I admit it. I give the panhandlers who are probably going to buy a bottle of beer. I often up there by Gas City, when there used to be a lot of people there, meet me at McDonald's. Few ever did, though. But I, I've been known to, uh, I've probably given away money that was used for the wrong purposes. But something we've got to understand is what our responsibility is, is to give. It's between them and the Lord. Well, the Lord calls us to give, and I don't know the heart. You don't know the heart of those individuals out there. And uh, sometimes you put yourself in a little danger doing that. I recently had a vagrant stop me in the Ace parking lot, raising money to get a bus to go to Casa Grande. And when you know how he gets up to the McDonald's, there's that McDonald's again, where the Graham Paws picks you up. Well, I took them up to the McDonald's. We found out the bus stops there, but you don't buy tickets there. And it's uh, $30 to get a ticket to go to Tucson only. And there they sell you a ticket to go on. And I bought the ticket. Now, I left. That guy might have never gone to Tucson. But heaven help me, if there was someone that was going to be on that bus who might have witnessed this man besides me witnessing to him. And I didn't do that. I never, I would, I pray that you fall on the side of being too generous. Rather than being afraid you're being taken. The Lord knows your heart. If your heart is giving to help that person, you're obeying the Lord. I know we're called to be good stewards of his money. And I'll tell you, that guy might have caught a ride with a truck driver, might have hitchhiked out of there and went and bought some dope with my money. I don't know. But I got to witness to him while I was talking with him. And that might never change his life. But the Lord says his word doesn't return for him. That may be something he thinks of the next day, the next year, ten years from now. But regardless, our job is to be obedient to the word. And the word says, you fed me when I was hungry. You cared for me when I was sick. You clothed me when I was naked. And I don't think God gave us the job of deciding who is entitled to that. God's forgiveness is for all. Uh, the murderer in prison can accept the Lord and have the same salvation you and I have. It's not our call. It is never something to second guess or feel guilty about. I'm not saying other people should pick people up. That's something that upsets my wife all the time. I pick up hitchhikers too. <laughs> it's just my nature. I trust, I pray when I do it, I trust the Lord to protect me. And people in law enforcement will say I'm crazy. 
and you know what? Going to heaven is not such a big thing. Uh, if the worst comes to worst, uh, more than likely I might end up without my wallet one day. But if I know I've done what the scripture calls me to do, I can feel at peace with that. That's our duty as Christians. It's not our job to determine who we do. Where do our good works come from? Why can I do? I'm, and I know I'm saying I a lot. But just, I don't know what you do. But I'm, I'm a chicken. I don't put myself in dangerous situations normally. I love to ride my motorcycle. I don't ride with one group of guys I'm friends with because they're generally 10 miles over the speed limit. I'm happy at the speed limit in five below. I don't need to be piled on the road somewhere. I'm, I have nothing special and I have less money than most. Yet, I have no fear of this and that has nothing to do with me. That's why I can say me. It's strictly the Lord. The Lord working in me. The Lord giving me that courage. The Lord leading me into the path of these people. And heaven help us if we ever have the Lord lead someone to our door and we turn them away. I had a whole bunch of other things written down that I really don't know we need to go on tonight because this is a pretty simple lesson. Yet I think it's one that speaks volumes. We don't get our salvation by doing it. That is what the scripture is saying. But if you, if you profess that the Lord is your Savior, and there's not a change in you, and you don't have a heart for those who are lost, who, or who are in need, you need to examine your faith in the Lord. You need to get with a good Christian brother and sister and pray about this. I'm not a Bible scholar. I have my own situation, but... When the Lord speaks to me, and one of the best ways He speaks to me is when I try to prepare a lesson. And He really moves my heart. I know, I know that this is something that has to be said. And someone here is going to hear it. And it's not me again, because I'm not a speaker. I'm not a scholar. I'm just a guy who gets overly passionate about things. And I just praise the Lord for the group of people He's put into my life here. And that I do know the hearts they have. Our, many of you may not know it, our very first service in this building, we had a family come in. A husband, wife, and a child that was a special needs child that was trying to get somewhere. I forget where, do you remember where it is? But uh, the guys quickly got together and we decided to help them out. That's, that was a reaffirming thing for us. We're brand new, we're in the building, we need every nickel we have. But guess what? You can't outgive God. If we ever have people not belong to this church, but in this community in great need, and we don't respond to them, we're putting God in a box. We're saying He can't support our needs. Because the truth of it is, God doesn't need my money, or your money, or any of your money. God doesn't need our money. He needs our obedience. And He's calling us to do this. To obey is much greater than the sacrifice. Obedience is the hope that and the over and over in the scripture, we're called to care for our brothers. The government didn't used to do it. We did it. The church did it. The body of Christ cared for those in need. And I don't think the scriptures changed because our government changed. It's the same then, the same today, and it'll be the same to eternity. We're called to represent Christ in this world. And Christ loves each and every one. 
and whether we don't like a person has nothing to do with it. We're still required to love them. And you can love. I mean, any of us who have kids know you can love someone and not like them all the time. Did you always like your kids? You didn't like their actions. But you were called to love that child, and you did. So, open your hearts. Open your minds to those that are different, or those that are need, or those who created their own problem. We all stumble. We all fall. Uh, so many times, I remember in the past, their problem is self-inflicted. Let them straighten it out. But that is what God calls us to do. Well, this is a really short sermon, but it was a message I wanted to give tonight. And now, Brother Mike, will you close us in prayer? Sure. Please join us. Heavenly Father, we stand before you, Lord, as a group of humble Christian men and women. We're here, Lord, to worship your name, to praise our Lord and our Savior. We're here, Lord, also to gather the spiritual strength, the feeding that will enable us to endure the strength that comes from the, the camaraderie, the companionship, the fellowship of Christians gathered in the name of the Lord. We give this day to you, O Jesus, as you are our Lord, our Savior, our Creator. As we go forth through this week, Lord, please keep us under your wing. Keep us close to your side, Lord. As your children walk through the shadows of the valleys, until we can meet again, praise your name and celebrate who we are and who you are, our King and our God. It's in your name, Lord, we always pray.